Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip, and welcome to the lightning rabbit hole I've been going down. I've always found lightning fascinating, and I've also learned quite a bit uh, the last six months I've been researching this as well. So the good thing about this video is you're going to get six months of my research condensed into probably 10 or 15 minute videos. And so uh, what we're looking at is a plasma ball. And so basically that's what lightning is, is plasma. And the sun's made up that, of that as well. And there's also different types of lightning, too. I didn't realize. I just thought lightning was lightning. Uh, but there's negative stroke, positive stroke, and cloud to cloud, and intracloud, and all that kind of other. There's even some other types outside of that ball lightning, lightning, which is also subjective as well. And so that's the thing about this lightning uh, story that I'm doing. Uh, a lot of it is subjective because it's unpredictable. Now, I have my own theories about this as well, which could be wrong. Uh, but I'm not the only one that has these theories. There's others out there that have them as well. And so that's why I started carrying out my, some of my own experiments to see just how this stuff behaves. And so that's why I have this plasma ball. I have a Van de Graaff generator and also a, a Tesla uh, coil as well. So, And I've been trying to go back and remember some of the things I did during home inspections where I've seen lightning damage and trying to understand why it did what it did. So, and I also have been here in South Alabama my entire life, mostly, and we are the lightning capital of Alabama, by the way, and also lightning is the number two uh, weather-related death cause, too, and I didn't know that as well. We just don't really think much of this stuff until we're actually directly affected by it. So, y'all stay tuned, guys. This is going to be my first story when I was a little kid. Check this out. I remember back when I was a little kid, I was looking at the plate glass window in my house where I used to live across the road. And a neighbor across the street from us was out on his carport. He was out there watching the storm as well. It was an open carport. Uh, he also worked with my dad at Scott Paper back in the day as well. A lot of people who lived in Spanish Fort back then uh, worked at Scott Paper, International Paper, or Asco Shipbuilding, just to name a few. But anyway, we were out there and I was, remember seeing the, the flashing coming off this glasses from across the road. And it wasn't too long after him being out there and me standing at the window, this massive bolt of lightning struck. <laughs> On an interesting footnote, I figured I'd throw this in there. My neighbor across the road was sitting in one of these web back aluminum chairs that fold up. They're light as a feather. Uh, but just know that aluminum's the second best conductor to copper, and he may have even got lit up a little bit sitting in this thing. But he made it inside the house, and he was around after that. So I kind of figured I'd throw this in there uh, to make this story kind of interesting. My mother remarried in 69, moved to San Antonio. And the person she married had an electrical company, and he taught me quite a bit about electricity. And he told me, he says, Chuck, it always takes all past the ground. So I've remembered that. And so I had two moms in, back then, my mother in Texas and my grandparents here, who I call mom and dad as well. Check out this news story, guys. Jessica Hartz was outside mowing when she noticed a quick moving storm approaching. She decided to go inside. Minutes later, she saw a flash of light, then a very loud bang. The lightning hit um, the house, uh, so it scared me. I dropped to the floor, covered my head, panicking like, what's happening? The lightning striking the roof, the surge of energy traveling through the home, vinyl siding up top and below can be seen shattered. When it came time to move the truck, the homeowner tried to start it. It did not start. They quickly realized the lightning also got the truck. Burn marks on the rims and chunks taken out of the driveway indicate Mother Nature's wrath extended to the truck. My theory is, is that lightning hit the ridge of this roof at the top where the flashing is, being aluminum flashing, of course, and it traveled it, and it flashed over to the gutter system, which was also aluminum, 
and then it went down two different aluminum downspouts to the ground. Then it flashed over again. It went through the home. It probably traveled uh, across some of the ductwork in the attic because usually that's metal, even aluminum foil uh, ductwork. And you can see that the ductwork here at the eave, it looks like it blew off the cover. That's actually the bath van ductwork there. So that's also aluminum. And so it probably traveled back uh, to the bath van itself and went through the electrical system that way and it fried all the switches and outlets in the house as a result. And so this is just a, an amazing amount of damage one of these strikes can do. Now, granted, this house, if you look at this photograph here, what made this vulnerable to lightning was the fact that it was the tallest structure in the middle of this field. But it also could have had radiant barrier in this too, which is a foil type of insulation that they put in some houses. It goes along the bottom roof decking to make this a foam board as well. It's got aluminum foil on both sides and also a foam where it's got foam in the middle and aluminum foil on both sides of that. But a lot of this is just pure aluminum foil on paper and they put it on the underside of the roof decking. Now, I've read some compelling stories and reports about this stuff to where they claim it actually attracts light into the home. And I'm starting to go along with that theory because what can happen when you have a whole roof line that's full of aluminum, well, they can actually start acting as a capacitor uh, for positive electrons. And so you got the negative uh, charge from the cloud coming down and it's got, the, you've got this whole roof line here full of positive electrons where it's going to equal out the differences. Opposites do attract. So that's what makes this house with this radiant barrier vulnerable to lightning, even if you're not at the highest point. In fact, you know, lightning will discharge within a 50-yard radius once that charge gets built up into the cloud. And so it's going to find a, a place to go, and it's not necessarily be the highest part either because there's houses in my neighborhood that's below me that's been hit. And so it's going to take the path of least resistance, not always the tallest point. And some of these experiments I've done with this uh, Tesla coil, you'll see that. I know I said earlier that opposites do attract, but uh, lightning actually goes both ways. <laughs> that, that may be what makes it so bad. And so anyway, most of the lightning that we see are cloud to ground lightning is going to work out like this. It's going to come from the negative charge portion of the cloud and it's going to make these step leaders coming down toward the ground. Now, all this is going on in, in, with the milliseconds, and then a positive charge starts coming off the ground, and then one of them makes contact with it. That's when we see the bright flash and the return stroke back up to the cloud, and the stroke's complete. Now, there has been some of these strokes recorded as long as 17 seconds long, but generally these last longer, no longer than a second. But you, there are some cases where lightning does go from the ground to the cloud, but generally that happens on regular towers, that sort of thing, tall objects. Uh, but this is usually what we deal with here. Now, uh, some of the rare or form of lightning, which is not so rare when you have a lot of it, it's called a positive stroke. And that's where you can see uh, in this illustration here, we got the negative charge part of the cloud at the bottom. And then above that, you have a positive charge part of it. And so when you have a bolt that originates from this positive layer up there and comes down to the ground to the positive side of that. Uh, it's called a positive stroke lightning and it's about 300 million volts and hundreds of thousands of amps and, and it can just really destroy pretty much everything it hits. I mean, if it's a tree, it explodes. If it's your house, it explodes it. And if you're near anything outside and you happen to be out there and it strikes that object, well, it's gonna energize the ground for a pretty good distance depending on how conductive the soil is. And if it's wet, it's probably gonna go even further. And so I would say the majority of people uh, that are struck by lightning are probably never struck by the bolt itself, but were near a tree or near an object that did get struck and, and it could probably reach out to them 50 yards away. And that's how they call it being struck by lightning, but actually what happened was is it energized the ground and depending on how far away they were from it, it could be 30,000 volts at you know, 50, 100 feet away from this. And so that's why, you know, it's important when you hear thunder to go inside, you know, even though uh, it's reported that a third of all lightning injuries are with inside the home. I found that kind of surprising. Now, I remember when I used to swim up there at Spanish Fork Pool, you know, Susie Rush was a lifeguard for one of them. And so when it started thundering, boy, she, she jumped up and she would 
say, all right, guys, y'all get out. And so and we did. We followed her orders and usually went down underneath the stand down there. Uh, that was a pretty safe place to get. Or we could go in the office if you want to freeze to death. But, you know, we got out of the water, and it's a good thing that she looked out for us back then because who knows? I mean, it wouldn't have necessarily had to hit the pool. It could just hit one of those big, tall pine trees out there and, and skipped across into this pool. So video of light action hitting water. This is a positive stroke strike. Tesla gun was to create some of this stuff and and I really didn't know I was able to create it all. went back and slowed the film down uh, but you can see in this photograph you see these two white sprites coming up off of the globe basically you pretend that center ball is the earth and so when I opened up the capacitor uh, that's when that forms so preparing for a negative strike to that and so here's a guy walking down his sidewalk and you can see this bolt of lightning come up the side of his leg and more than likely, uh, that's a positive streamer coming up off the earth because it had been a connective strike. He'd been vaporized more than likely. And so you know, I figured these would be interesting to show you. Uh, this is where, you know, lightning can actually hit what appears to be in broad daylight. A close call caught on camera. And it was a sunny afternoon on Saturday in Sebring when that happened. You can have a storm, you know, 10 miles away and and it can actually travel that far. It don't always take the, the closest path uh, to it. It can take the, I believe it takes the most uh, conductive path. I'm fixing to get into the other part of this, my next series of this. I appreciate you, your patience with this. It's been a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but my next episode is not gonna make any sense if I didn't put this out here first because it really does tie in to why a lightning arresting system or lightning rod system makes sense. And so, you're going to see some pretty cool stuff when I put that up. But I do appreciate every one of you guys. And please share your lightning stories. We all like to read them and we may learn something from them as well. Uh, but most of all, I just appreciate you being part of this channel. And if you want to be notified, just click the notification bell right there and it'll, it'll let you know when I put this up. Y'all take care, guys. Be safe.